It's time for exciting live and local sports action on Richmond's very own WBON-TV, the leader in local sports television. Remember to like our YouTube channel so you'll never miss any of our live sports coverage. And support these great local sponsors who support our community. Now, here's your announcers for the game. Good evening, everyone, and welcome in to Berea College tonight, where tonight Madison Southern playing a home game here at Berea College as they take on Great Crossing out of Scott County. And, Jamie, we were talking before we came live on the air on WBON-TV that this is the first ever meeting between these two schools because it is the first year for Great Crossing. And it uh, should be a fun game. Great Crossing is having a really good year. They have surprised some people. And when you look at the 11th region as a whole, I mean, you know, Lexington Catholic's got a good team, Henry Clay, but there are probably eight or nine teams on any given night that can beat the other. We just saw Madison Central earlier this week defeat Frederick Douglass, and I think when you look at this Eagles team, if they're hitting their shots, they can knock off anybody in the 11th region as well. Absolutely. They, they play scrappy defense. They have active hands, and they usually get it done on that end of the floor. It's a matter of when they can put the ball in the basket and who's hot. If they get enough people hot, they can beat anybody. They can certainly pick up this big win today. Now, you made your calling by calling Berea College basketball games back in the day. How long ago was it when you did that? I started doing that around 2012 in the fall of that year. Did it for about five years. Uh, you may or may not know, during that time, we had a Sports Center number one play. I did not know that. A guy by the name of Corey Wise hit a uh, shot on the near roller, ro rolling where Willie Court signed to us on the opposite end of the court at the buzzer to win the game. We were the Sports Center top play, and my voice was on there. I thought that's why you asked me to do this. Well, the reason I asked you to join me on the broadcast tonight is basically because everybody else was busy. Excellent, excellent. You that know, works too. So, you know, yeah. that's that's the main reason. But, uh, yeah, we're glad to have you here with us, Jamie. You are a veteran of calling games here at Berea College. So uh, we may rely on you some tonight to tell us where the bathroom is and where the concession stand is. Excellent. Those are my two specialties, Michael. <laughs> well, tonight's game should be fun, though. You look at the, the athletes that Great Crossing can put out there. And this Eagles team, they like to shoot the three ball. If they're hitting threes, again, they could knock off anybody. It's when that three ball isn't falling that they kind of struggle to score some points. We seen them earlier this year against Berea, knocked down a ton of threes. You and I were on the call for that game. Uh, we we seen, them, seen them against Woodford County and knocked down a ton of threes. So they have got the capability to knock down the three ball, but it's when the threes don't go down that this team can struggle. And we'll see tonight if they can get the threes to fall. Again, no Trent Marbley out for the season. That's been a big difference for this team this year, but – you know, by this point, they've kind of figured out how to not have Trent out there, how to play without him being out there on this team. And I think when you look at this team for Madison Southern as a whole, they've got the pieces, and, you know, Coach Newton has been kind of going with that platoon system some throughout the year. No Britton Robinson on the team anymore, but he's still got nine or ten different guys that he can throw out there for his basketball team. Yeah, he plays a lot of guys, which, which, which I can see the good and the bad of that. They're always fresh. They're running. It keeps the defense from being able to really hone in on what's happening. But it, it can be tough to get in a rhythm there. But I do think Coach Newton's good about it. If a guy's hot, we're going to leave him in. We're going to give him the rock. Uh, I, I've not seen great crossing play. Just looking at the eyeball test here, Michael, they got some big dudes there. Yes, they've got some big guys, and they've got some athletes. And we'll see what the Eagles can do to combat that here at Berea College. We are live on the EKU pregame show. The campus beautiful awaits you in choosing your college. Choose Eastern Kentucky University. For more information, go to eku.edu. We were on the campus of EKU last night for a game between Model and Berea, and we saw one of the craziest endings to a basketball game that I've ever seen. Coming down into the final seconds of the ball game, Model down by two had a chance to win the game on a wide-open three that uh, didn't hit anything. It went out of bounds. On the ensuing inbounds pass, there was like two seconds to go. Berea inbounds, and there's a foul immediately. And the, the clock keeper, with the clock system they have at Berea, or at, at Model, was unable to stop the clock before the game ended. The officials got together. They were going to put more time on the clock. They wanted to put point three, which I didn't understand because there was 1.8 when the ball went out of bounds. By the time you inbound it and get the foul, there maybe could have been point eight taken off the clock. Yes, so I agree. There should have been at least maybe one second on the clock remaining, but the officials said point three. 
at Berea's or for Model's clock system, there was no way to put just 0 0.3 on the clock. So he had to try and time it. And they tried to time it like 15 different times, could never get it. The closest they got was 0 0.5. If you ask me, 0 0.5 and 0 0.3 are basically the same thing. <laughs> yep. But the officials did not think so. And eventually they said, okay, forget it. We're going to shoot the free throws and see what happens. And the, the player missed both free throws, but Model couldn't get a shot off. The game ended. But for about 10 to 15 minutes, we were trying to figure out how do we end this ball game. It was a very weird ending, and uh, Model ended up falling to Berea at home. It was the first time in 12 years that Model lo lost to Berea. Oh, wow. I, so it was a big uh, loss yeah, last night for the Model basketball program. Again, under first-year head coach, Coach Morgerson, they're still trying to find their way. They've got some good teams. They've got some good players. And I think that – when that 44th district tournament rolls around, Jamie, it's going to be a lot of fun over at EKU coming up in about three or four weeks. You know, I, I believe it or not, I tuned in with exactly two seconds to go last <laughs> night, and I watched the entire debacle. It was like they were trying to ask the scorekeeper to hit a trick shot with yeah. everybody looking at him to hit that to hit that time. And I agree with you. With a, with a system like that, I feel like you just kind of have to err on the side of giving them more time because yeah. you're not cheating people out of time. It's going to take a miracle for them to get that shot in anyway. But after seeing how close that was, like you said, you and I called the Berea Southern game. That was tight even without some of the best players on the floor due to foul trouble. I can't wait to the district tournament. A lot of uh, a lot of fun can happen, and anybody can take it home. Yeah, same on the girls' side. I mean, we're going to see a, a really fun tournament when that tournament comes around on the girls' side of the 44th district tournament. As well, we are live here at Berea College, uh, live on the EKU pregame show. We'll take a three-minute commercial break, and when we come back, we will give you our Jack Burford Chevrolet keys to the game for a Madison Southern victory this evening. Coming back at you in three minutes on 106.7 The Pinnacle and WBON-TV.com. Need a physical for school or work? Need it right away? No problem! Berea Urgent Care has two convenient locations along with late hours to meet your needs. They're affordable too. Physicals at Berea Urgent Care only $20. DOT and CDL physicals are only $65. Berea Urgent Care number one by Walmart is open every day 9 to 9. Berea Urgent Care number two by Berea Drug open Monday through Friday 10 to 6. No appointment necessary. Berea Urgent Care, here when you need us. I'm Michelle. And I'm Jennifer. And in the spring of 1992, Bishop's Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Estill County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cup Cadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shindawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop's Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see ya. Welcome to Chenault Vineyards, locally grown wine. Right here in the heart of Richmond, Chenault Vineyards is a place that everyone can enjoy. Celebrate your next event at Chenault Vineyards, whether it be a wedding, baby or wedding shower, office event, or just a place to gather with friends. You can't beat the venues or the amazing views at Chenault Vineyards. Chenault Vineyards has a restaurant open Friday through Sunday and live music as well. Visit ChenaultVineyards.com to learn more about this amazing place tucked back into the heart of Richmond. Chenault Vineyard. Citizens Guarantee Bank makes banking on the go a breeze. Banking on the go has never been easier with options like balance inquiries, make payments from any mobile device, transfer funds between accounts, activate or deactivate a card with just a tap. And with mobile checking deposit, you can deposit checks straight into your eligible checking account using your iPhone, iPad, or Android device. Take advantage of all these fast, convenient, and secure services of Citizens Guarantee Bank. Mobile carrier charges and rules and restrictions may apply. See bank for details. Citizens Guarantee Bank member FDIC. Equal housing with. The Estill Clinic and Irvine Healthcare Pharmacies are focused on providing the best care possible for the people of Estill County. Our care for our patients and our community is what sets us apart. With society's fast pace, we want to make sure you leave with the information you need about your medications. With the knowledge and experience of John, Ryan, and Janet, you are guaranteed excellent service, whether you're in the store or pulling through the drive through Taking care of the people of Estill County is our number one priority. So stop in or give us a call to become a part of our community. Gateway Cycles in Mount Sterling has the largest showroom in Central Kentucky with all the power sports products you can dream of for your next adventure. Gateway Cycles has a qualified, certified service department, friendly sales staff so you can ride free and play hard. 
Local people serving local people. We are here to make your dream a living adventure. Stop in and see us today at Gateway Cycles in Mount Sterling or visit us at gatewaycycles.com. Handle all your dental needs. We are back at Berea College. Jamie Boggs, Michael Watkins here with you. And Jamie, tonight's game should be a lot of fun here at Madison Southern. When you look at this team for great crossing, they come in with a good record, uh, a better RPI. And the RPI system is still kind of uh, finding its way since the first year of the RPI system with the KHSAA using it in basketball. But for this great crossing team, you got 13.8 points per game from K.J. Tucker, 13.2 from Michael McKenzie, 11.4 from Jalen Barber. So they've got three guys pouring in double figures. That's a very balanced attack for sure. It, and this Eagles team has the same thing. Now, Chad Fugit, he has to kind of be the main guy for them. When he puts up big numbers, that's when this team can really knock off a, a, a threat in the 11th region. But you look at the RPI, Madison Southern currently sits with an RPI of 51663, and Great Crossing has an RPI of 54211. Translate. Uh that according to the RPI, this game should be a very close one. Yes, and and you look at the common opponents. Uh, they both played Trinity uh, and lost in kind of close game. Yeah. Even the Southern, that was the opening game of the season. They had that when it gave it away. Uh, the similar performances against common components usually means you're you're in for a good matchup. But basketball is a weird game, man. Anything can happen. Yeah, Madison Central and Great Crossing played just last week, or two weeks ago on January the 18th, and the Indians beat Great Crossing 54-50. to So uh, we've not seen Central and Southern play yet this year, but I think at some point that is going to happen, whether it be in the first round of the 44th District Tournament or it could be in the 44th District Championship game. Again, we've talked about how competitive that district tournament is going to be in a month or so whenever that will be taking place over at EKU. Uh, Jamie, this is a very nice facility here at, at Seabury is what it's called, the gym here at at, uh, at uh, Berea College. It's a very cool atmosphere. You've got bleachers all over the court, basically, besides the, the near side goal that we are uh, on top of. We are up in the rafters, basically, but we've got a really good view of tonight's game. Yeah, we're on the indoor track on the third floor of the building, uh, and it, it's actually filled in pretty well along both sidelines there. And, yeah, it's a great facility. Berea College now NCAA Division Three for about the last four years in the uh, Big South Conference. I think you can probably catch the banners across the court there of the uh, other schools that that participate in that conference. So they uh, they get a lot more support for that, and they're able to keep this place looking great. Yeah, and I think when you look at the way this is laid out, it's a good place to have a high school game as well. And I was talking to Jay Simmons, the AD at Madison Southern, and he said they actually wanted to try to have – the Berea Southern game here. They're going to try to get that worked out to have that here every single year from now on. So I think that would be a good thing to start. Have Especially that we saw yes. <laughs> this year, that game at Berea, there was nowhere to sit. They were actually turning folks away mm -hmm. and telling them to watch us because there was no room at the end, basically, for uh, the folks trying to come and watch that Berea-Madison Southern game uh, what, about a month ago or so? Yeah, well, we appreciate the views. We'd much rather be in a venue yeah. that uh, that allows everybody that wants to to get in. So I think that's a wonderful idea, and I think you'd have no problem making this place pretty packed. It is Berea College. That's where we're at tonight. Madison Southern and Great Crossing live here on the EKU pregame show. It's now time for our Jack Burford Chevrolet key to the game for the Eagles to pull out the victory. Our Jack Burford Chevrolet key to the game. First of all, take care of the basketball. This great crossing team's got some good athletes, and you've got to be able to rebound against them and not turn the ball over because when they get out in space, when they get out on the fast break, they can really put up some points, and they are a hard team to stop. Also, for the Eagles, you've got to knock down the three-pointer. It's a little bit different here at this gym. It's, it's kind of an open, um, open, I guess, goal, the way you look at it, right. especially the, the one farthest away from us. So you've got to be able to knock down your three-point shot, and I think the team that uh, can focus and, and kind of hone in earlier on can have a better chance to win tonight's ball game. Yeah, I think you're right, and you mentioned it. It sounds elementary, but but if they hit shots, they're going to be in good yeah. shape. Uh, and, and they they have a more perimeter-based offense anyway, so I don't think the defensive length and size of great crossing in the half court is going to bother them quite as much. Uh, it's on the offensive end where they're going to – or defensive end for Southern where they're going to have to uh, make sure they keep great crossing out of the paint. Those are your Jack Burford Chevrolet keys to the game. Get to Jack Burford Chevrolet for a new Chevrolet. It's a great time 
Inferno Chevrolet at Jack Burford. And you can check out their entire inventory at jackburford.com. Samantha Burford will be here for our halftime interview. She'll be coming up later on for the halftime interview with uh, Coach Austin Newton to see what uh, he thinks about the way his team plays in the first half. So we'll hear from him at the half. We'll take another three-minute commercial break, and when we come back, the starting lineups and the tip-off here at Berea College between Madison Southern and Great Crossing. Folks, don't go anywhere. We'll be coming right back at you in three minutes on 106.7 The Pinnacle and WBONTV.com. Gillum Sports Lounge is the place to go to watch your favorite team, whether it be EKU, Kentucky, or your favorite local high school team on WBONTV. Gillum's has you covered on one of their many flat screen TVs. Gillum's has something on the menu for everyone. Pizza, burgers, mouth-watering appetizers, subs, sandwiches, salads, and more. And Gillum's Sports Lounge is the perfect place to host your next event in one of their private rooms. When you think local food in Richmond, think Gillum Sports Lounge at 830 Eastern Bypass inside the Richmond Mall. Hometown Dental in Richmond has been serving the people of Madison County for many years. Now when you go to Hometown Dental, you can get everything you need under one roof because Hometown Dental now offers orthodontics. Hometown Dental is a full-service family dentistry dental group with a personal touch. Check out their website, hometowndentalrichmond.com, to learn about their services and staff at Hometown Dental. Located at 4095 Atwood Drive, Suite A in Richmond. Mention this ad and get free x-rays or $100 off Zoom whitening treatment at Hometown Dental. When you're in Estill County and get the hungries, be sure to eat at Estill's Finest. In the mood for the best barbecue, pulled pork, brisket, steaks, ribs, or burgers? Follow the smoke to the House of Q. And for the best pizza, pasta, or salad, head on down to the Steam Engine Pizza Pub. No matter what you're craving, remember Estill's Finest, Steam Engine Pizza Pub on Main Street, or for mouth-watering barbecue, it's House of Q on River Drive in Irvin. Healthy smiles are confident smiles. Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry is offering a new patient special. X-rays, exam, cleaning, and fluoride for only $99. They also have a $10 unit Botox special. Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry offers their patients single visit restoration on crowns, bridges, inlays, onlays, and veneers with CIRAC. Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry is equipped to handle all your dental needs from implants, teeth whitening, root canal therapy, and more. For your next dental appointment, call Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry at 859-988. At Madison Drug, Charles and his staff know your time is valuable and will work to get you in and out quickly. We have a convenient drive through and offer free delivery. For vaccinations, just walk right in, no appointment necessary. Madison Drug, Richmond's hometown pharmacy. At Madison Drug, Charles and his staff know your time is valuable and will work to get you in and out quickly. We have a convenient drive through and offer free delivery. For vaccinations, just walk right in, no appointment necessary. Madison Drug, Richmond's hometown pharmacy. It's been a busy year. So what's on your to-do list? Serious house hunting, home improvement projects, or maybe a new car or a boat for summers on the lake. For more than a century, your neighbors at Cumberland Valley National Bank have been helping turn plans into reality. Stop by any of CVNB's branch offices or visit CVNB.com and find the right personal vehicle or home loan that fits your budget and meets your needs. CVNB, local banking with big time advantages. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Back at Bria College, and they are honoring the trainer for Madison Southern. And I, I couldn't hear what the PA was saying, Jamie, but could it be that maybe she's hanging it up? Possibly the, the reaction from the players that are out there with her right now seems like that might be the case. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of smiles in there, a lot of hugs. Um, she was obviously emotional coming out on the court, so... Big uh, standing ovation on both sides of the court there. Again, we are live here at Berea College, Madison Southern, and Great Crossing squaring off in a home game for the Eagles this evening. You can see Jay Lang, uh, Langfels, the baseball coach out there, Allie Terry, the girls' basketball coach. So it, it must be that she's just uh, maybe retiring or just hanging it up as far as being the uh, – the trainer for the Eagles sports programs Looks and like John Clark out there as well. So it's a lot of, yeah. a lot of coaches out there supporting here. So that's got to be what the case is. Again, we couldn't hear the PA announcement, um, but that looks as if that's what the case. She's got some gifts. So she was, uh, you know, you've never bought me players. a gift before. What's up with that? If you'll retire, I will. Oh, 
Okay. You tired of working with me already? We've only been working together for about a month. So if that's the case, that. you know, I don't know. Uh, we are going to be having you live here on WBONTV.com and 106.7 The Pinnacle. The national anthem about to take place. So we will have that for you here as well. Eagles and great crossing squaring off here, Jamie, in a home game for the Eagles. The Warhawks of great crossing. That's a new nickname to I come like across. That. I like that. Yeah, I'm with, I'm with you. Again, great crossing coming into tonight's game with a record of 12 and 10. They are 6 and 4 in 11th region play. And again, just a few weeks ago, lost to Madison Central over in Richmond in a game that we had for you here. On one of our radio stations that was on WEKY a couple of weeks ago. So, see if now the Eagles can invite Great Crossing into Madison County twice and send them out of here with two losses. Yeah, it's uh, and obviously this is the first year as a school, but that doesn't mean that they lack talent. Uh, they got a lot of athletes on the court. They have had a good year. I mean, a lot of times you start a new school, you're starting completely from scratch. Uh, they got some players, so they're able to put some things together and get some wins, and they're going to try to pick up another one tonight. They had a huge win earlier on in the year, and they beat their in-county rival, Scott County. Oh, yeah. That's a huge win for this program. They beat them 64-52. to That game was held at Scott County. So, uh, for them to – I mean, again, it's, it's in the same county, but for them to beat, you know, Scott County was a prohibitive – They've been in the state championship game for the last two years, you see, and they're just always a dominant program. For them to do that, pretty impressive in their first year, and now uh, they're trying to get a big win here at Berea College in front of a good crowd here for Madison Southern. And I like this, Jamie. The lights are out. Got the uh, spotlights on the players. You ever played here before on this I floor? Uh, not in an official game. There was a, uh, a weekly game held for faculty and staff that I used to play and uh, jog up and down the court on. We actually played, you know, a couple of weeks ago we had the Lexington Media versus Madison Southern staff. The first time I had played with the Lexington Media team, we played here against Berea College. And that was last year sometime. And Tristan was on our team. And uh, let's, let's just say that there wasn't many shots going around with Tristan on the team. That's, uh, that's, that's no joke there. I appreciate the invite to play this year to uh, do play-by-play -play and watch the game from really far well, away. Well, we were going to put you on the squad, but uh, we heard your J was broke, <laughs> as was mine. So. It's got to be fixed before you can ever break it. <laughs> well, you had a good game, man. It was good. I think you had 13 points, a lot of fouls, good stuff. Hey, you got to use those fouls. You can take them home with you is what I say. Starters for the Eagles tonight, you've got the big man, Nick Turner, in the middle. Hunter Buchanan, who his grandfather was – Roland Weirwilly. Roland Weirwilly, who is the court Berea named Berea. after here at Berea College. His grandson is Hunter Buchanan, who is playing tonight for Madison Southern. So, a little bit of a nice note. Also starting, number four, Colby Sebastian. Number 20, leading scorer, Chad Fugit. Number 41, Nate Turner. And number 44, Jonah Wooten. For great crossing, they're starting number zero, Jalen Barber. Number two, Michael McKenzie. Number three, K.J. Tucker. Number 11, Neil Baker, and number 22, Ty Sherman. So here we go. It'll be Barber and Turner tipping it off. The ball controlled by a great crossing. And we are underway at Berea College. Sebastian 
as he always does, harassing the point guard of the opposing team. Great crossing with the basketball first. It's McKenzie on the right wing. He'll go over to the left side. For the basketball number 11, Baker, the point guard, senior guard for the Warhawks. There's a three early trifecta on the way, and it's good. It's a pretty shot off the hands of K.J. Tucker, the senior guard, and he knocks it down. It's great crossing three, Madison Southern, nothing. That was a really pure stroke there. It looked uh, he, he got good elevation and finished well, and it didn't touch any rim whatsoever. Sebastian with it for the Eagles. Sebastian will come around the corner, picked up his dribble, tried to find a cutting Wooten, and the pass stolen away, an early turnover for Madison Southern. And Great Crossing trying to extend the early lead. 3-0, we are one minute into the ball game. It's Baker with it for Great Crossing. Near the midcourt trap, matched up with Buchanan. Baker crosses over. Buchanan stays with him. Now he's on the right side. Baker will bounce it over to number three. That's Tucker, who just hit a three on the first trip down for the Warhawks. Nice feed, ball deflected, stolen away. Good defense by the Eagles. When we come back the other way, it's Fugit. Wooten fell down, but he's back up and back in the action. Yeah, we mentioned the size advantage that Great Crossing was going to have. It really isn't on the court yet. Besides Barber, uh, the matchups across the board are about even, even size-wise. Fugit's three short, and Wooten hits the deck again. It's a rough first couple of minutes for Jonah Wooten. I mean, he always goes all out and gives it the complete effort and ends up on the floor for hustle, but he's uh, taking a couple unfortunate uh, dives that were not on purpose early here. Sebastian gets in and blows the layup. Eagles have had a couple of good looks early on but have not capitalized. It's 3-0, great crossing. Here's Tucker with it. He'll drive in, and shot comes off. Rebounded by Fugit. Fugit. Over to Sebastian, and Kobe will slow it down for Madison Southern, try to get something going offensively. Sebastian, pump fakes up top, Turner, open three on the way. That comes off as well. Another good look for the Eagles. That did not come down. Three, nothing, great crossing with the lead in the basketball. Southern's gotten three really good looks. I mean, those are normally shots that they uh, are high percentage for them. You're not going to get any better of a look than Sebastian got. Kick out, three on the way. This one comes off. That time it was McKenzie that had the open look. Iron unkind to this point for both teams other than the three from Tucker. Sebastian slowing it down for Madison Southern. Bounce pass over to T Turner on the near side at the, at the free throw line. Now it's Sebastian, gets a screen from Turner. Kobe going to back his way down, finds a, a cutting Wooten, and the reverse layup is good. 3-2, the Eagles on the board with 4.44 to play in the first quarter. There's a nice back cut there by Wooten, some uh, pick and pop action up top. Left uh, Wooten's man sleeping there on the baseline. Tucker whistled for the travel as he did not get the dribble down before he took off, and a quick sub for Great Crossing. Checking in is Fizor, the senior big man, and going out is McKenzie. Four and a half to play in the first quarter. It's 3-2, Madison Southern down by a point, but they've got the ball. Nearing the halfway point of the opening period, Buchanan, deep three, right where his grandpa's name is on the floor, couldn't knock it down. And Tucker the other way for great crossing. Kicked it out, Fizor three from the corner. It's too hard, and the rebound to Sebastian. Neither of these teams really getting going yet. Not able to put together any back-to-back uh, -back baskets. Great Crossing came out, hit the first shot of the game, hasn't had any luck since. It's Fugit on the right wing. Chad up top to Jonah Wooten. Wooten takes one dribble in, now bounces it out to Turner, and Turner will give it up to Buchanan, who finds Sebastian. They will set the offense up as Walter Smith and Samuel Lee set the check in for the Eagles. Now it's Sebastian over in the corner. He'll dribble it back up to the right wing. Sebastian in the corner, he finds Wooten. Whoop, drives around the defense, hangs, draws the foul, and the basket won't go down, but Jonah Wooten will shoot two free throws for the Eagles. Rolled all around the rim before uh, falling out there. He's going to go to the line for two. And try to tie the game and hopefully take the lead here for the Eagles.
Wooten, first free throw, good. We're tied at three. One more free throw coming up for Jonah with 3.33 to play in the first quarter. Smith and Lee in. Sebastian and Buchanan out for Madison Southern. And Wooten knocks down a pair, and the Eagles have their first lead. Low-scoring game thus far, 4-3 to three, Madison Southern, even though the scoreboard doesn't say that. Our scoreboard does, though. Wooten has all of Southern's points, and Tucker has the only basket for great crossing. Try to find Fizor in the corner. A pass deflected. 3.21 to play in the first. It'll be McKenzie to inbound, or make that uh, Tucker to inbound. Michael, that is the worst spot on the court yep. to try to inbound from. Uh, yeah, Greg Crossing's lucky there that there's uh, there was no pressure put on the inbound there, but that's a tough spot. Baker in trouble, able to get rid of it. It's a Tucker three, knocked one down from the left wing to begin the game and knocks one down from the right wing on this attempt. And a whistle underneath. We've got a foul against somebody. Some shoving going on between Turner underneath and Barker for great crossing. Let's see what the officials say. I think that Jalen Barber, the big man, the three is good. And the foul is going to be against... Turner. Turner, I believe, yeah. Coach Newton asking what had happened. McKenzie back in for great crossing. At 6-4, the Warhawks in front. They go into Barber, but he can't knock down the layup. It's a good look. Just left it short. Now the rebound to Walter Smith, who's up the floor in a hurry for the Eagles. Now Smith backs it out. What a football player he was this year for John Clark and the Eagles football team. Pass deflected. Turner had it, but Baker comes to rip it away, and the Warhawks are in a hurry. Baker drives in, hangs, and the layup is good. It's 8-4. to four. Great crossing with the lead. That was some uh, solid contact there between Baker and Turner at the top of key going for the ball. I don't think Turner expected Baker to be that solid. Smith had a good drive but lost the handle. Now gets it back over here on the left wing. Smith thought about a deep three. Instead, finds Fugit. Now Fugit up top to Lee. Again, this floor bigger than the floor that the Eagles normally play on their high school floor. It's the same size as the EKU gym, or the EKU court at least, over at McBrayer Arena. As a backdoor cut by Lee, he makes the basket and draws the foul. That's the second time already here in the first six minutes that a Madison Southern Eagle has cut back door, and the point guard has found him. For an easy two, this time Lee draws the foul. And you mentioned the speed there, or the, the size, I mean, <laughs> of the court. Lee was really kind of hiding in the corners. Defender lost track of him for him to cut underneath. And it's always struck me the, the lack of consistency in court size, even amongst uh, arenas of the same level of play. I feel like it should be more consistent. Yeah. Here's McKenzie to Baker. Baker will drive in, lost the handle, stolen away by Smith. Smith, a three-on-one fast break. It's Lee who lays it up and in. Lee with a quick five points, and that 5-0 spurt gives Madison Southern a one-point lead, 9-8. to eight. Minute 40 to play in the first quarter. Now it's McKenzie. Over to Baker. Baker back to McKenzie on the left wing. Got Fizor in the corner, and they find him. Open for three. He left it short again. Fizor gets his own rebound. Cannot knock down the layup, but Barber is there, and he puts it in. His first basket of the game. 10-9, a minute 10 to play in the first. Here's Wooten. Bounce pass to Turner. Turner, one dribble, back over to Wooten as Wooten. Hands it off to Lee, back to Wooten in the corner. He'll pump fake and drive baseline. Bounce pass, what a feed to Fugit. His three, good. Chad Fugit, his first three of the game. It's 12-10, the Eagles have knocked down their first three-pointer. And now back in front by two. That's exactly what Southern tries to do with their offense. Get some penetration, draw the defense, and hit somebody for an open three, and Fugit will knock them down just as good as anybody in the region. Eagles playing kind of an extended 2-3 zone. Here's Tucker, gets baseline, can't knock it down, Lee the rebound. 
And Walter Smith was told by Coach Newton to slow it down. Let's hope for the final shot here. We're under 20 seconds to play in the first quarter, and the Eagles have a two-point lead. Turner picked up his dribble on a tough spot for the big man. Finds Smith right near the midcourt stripe. And Smith will hand it off to Chad Fugit as he cuts back door. Fugit in the corner, open three on the way. It's good. Turner knocks it down as the first quarter comes to an end. It's Madison Southern 15, great crossing 10. We'll come back in one minute, folks, on 106.7 The Pinnacle and WBONTV.com. At Eastern Kentucky University, we recognize greatness starts in the classroom, but it doesn't end there. You have to get hands-on, get real-world experience, and discover who you are meant to be. Be a crime fighter. Be a visionary. Be a colonel. See what you can be. Visit go.eku.edu slash colonel. Affordable Service Solutions is the heating and air company you want to call when you want the work done right the first time for an affordable price. That's Affordable Service Solutions. Call Brian at 779-0122 for all your heating and cooling needs, plus Tempstar units at an affordable price. That number again is 779-0122. And remember, Affordable Service Solutions is your local Tempstar dealer. Back at the Seabury Center at Bria College, Jamie Boggs, Michael Watkins here with you. Jamie, a good game thus far, and the Eagles knocking down back-to-back -back triples to end the first quarter, and they lead 15-10 after one. Went on an 11-2 run to close that out. They were trailing 8-4 at one point. Greg Crossing came out with some hot shooting. K.J. Tucker's hit a couple threes, but that's really all they've been able to get going offensively, whereas Southern has had several guys contribute and had a lot of success on that backdoor cut and penetration to kick out for a three. End of the game for the Eagles, number 14, that's – Jaden Adams. Adams kind of getting those minutes with the freed up minutes of Britton Robinson, who's no longer with the team. Of course, Britton going to be playing some baseball at East Tennessee State. So he's spending a lot of his uh, time and weekends down there getting those workouts in, preparing to be a college baseball player. It'll be Adams to inbound. I'll come in the backcourt to Smith, 15 to 10, under eight minutes to play. In the first half, just underway here in the second quarter at the Seabury Center in Roland Weir Willie Court. Lee drives, and this time he can't knock down the layup. Rebound to Fizor of Great Crossing, and they'll come up the floor down by five and the basketball. Coach Weir Willie, legendary coach here at Berea College. I was actually able to, uh, I had him for a class. He was a professor of mine for, I think, Volleyball and recreation games before he eventually retired has passed since, but uh, yeah, definitely deserves his name on the court here. 15 to 10. Inbounding for Greg Crossing is number 10. That's Smiley. And he turned it over. Good defense by the Eagles. Active hands. Here's Adams. Up the floor he comes. She'll dribble up top near the midcourt circle. Give it over to Smith. Now in the corner, it's Buchanan with it. Buchanan dribbles up top. Hunter left open for three. He'll take it. This time it's too hard. Rebound tipped out to Smiley. Smiley in a hurry the other way. Over in the corner, McKenzie. He'll drive around Smith. Smith went flying. No foul call, and the jumper is good. Smith kicks it out. Buchanan open three this time. Doesn't take it. Yeah, he Hunter. should have a – that's a definite advantage he has with his quickness there with Barber on him. Took it, took it to the back. And now there. Barber with a, just a blatant shove. No foul call. Barber literally shoved Hunter Buchanan near the midcourt drop. The officials didn't see it somehow. But Barber lowered his shoulder into Buchanan who hit the deck. And then there is a foul called on the Eagles. Extended both arms there. Newton's asking a lot of questions. The crowd certainly was not happy with what happened there. Buchanan 
and Barber bumped near the three-point line on this end, and as they went down the floor, Barber hit Buchanan once and then hit him again and sent him to the floor. First free throw from McKenzie is good. As Great Crossing, who trailed by five after the first quarter, has cut the lead to two with that free throw. That is McKenzie's third point of the game. 15-13, Eagles. With the lead, but McKenzie trying to trim it to a one-point lead, and he does just that with the free throw. Here's Sebastian. His team holding on to a one-point advantage, 6.25 to play in the second quarter. Lee in the corner with it. Up top to Adams. Adams kicks it back over to Lee on the right wing. Lee hands it off to Sebastian. Sebastian, behind the back dribble, finds Lee. If it in the post to Turner, out to Adams. He'll try a three. It's good. A pretty shot by Jaden Adams. Knocks it down, and the Eagles extend the lead, 18-14. The last three baskets for Madison Southern have all come from the three-point line. That was a smooth shot there. Very quick uh, perimeter set in here for, for Southern with Adams, Sebastian, and Buchanan, as well as Samuel Lee, whose athleticism I think we've seen is yeah. uh, very – it's not mean, I don't think, to say surprising. You just don't see it coming how high he can get up. Buchanan sneaks in for the easy steal. Hunter the other way with it. He'll give it off to Adams, who drives baseline, now crosses over between his legs, drives in, tough shot, lays it in. Adams off the bench with a quick five points, and Madison Southern extends that lead to six, 20 to 14, 514 to play in the first half. Here's Baker, his floater. Too hard, ball tipped around, rebounded by Sebastian. And Madison Southern will walk it up the floor with a six point lead as we cross over the five minute mark in the first half. We talked about the keys of the game beforehand. Southern's hitting their outside shots. They've not been abused on the glass. I feel like they're doing exactly what you said they needed to do to win. Adams, three, this time it's short. Had scored the last five for Madison Southern, but that one no good. And up the floor comes McKenzie with it. McKenzie, deep three. Comes off. Buchanan grabs the rebound. Outlet to Sebastian. Four and a half to play in the second quarter. Colby, down the floor he comes. They got a big advantage inside. Turner now comes out to set a screen. Sebastian doesn't use it. Goes the opposite way. Now Colby. Outlet to Turner. Now gets it back. Sebastian backs it up. Slows it down. Coach Newton calls out the offense. Newton wearing the, the tie and the button-up shirt with the sneakers today. Sebastian with the defense all over him. Finally gets it inside to Turner, and the ball tipped out. They're going to say off of Turner out of bounds to great crossing as Barber will check back in for the Warhawks. It's pretty intense there with uh, Sebastian being guarded by Baker. Some tough defense there. Sebastian saw Turner get a break underneath. It was a great cut. Baker will dribble in. Hangs, tough shot over the extended arm of Nate Turner. Puts it in. It's 2016 Madison Southern. 3.43 to play. Lee on the right wing. Swings it over. Adams kicks it out to Buchanan. He'll try three. Comes off. Hunter 0 for 2 from that spot. Now the outlet to Tucker. Lays it what in. What a pass. That was a half-court bounce pass that... Got by the defender. That was smooth. 30-second timeout. Madison Southern will take it with them and come back on 106.7 The Pinnacle on WBONTV.com. Is everybody buckled in? I want to make sure you're buckled in. You're more important. <laughs> Oh, guys, you're important, too. Remember, everyone's important, so buckle up to and from the ball game. Come on, let's go. So you guys have shown us a lot of love on Facebook and, of course, our website at WBONTV.com. Back on WBONTV.com, Jamie Boggs, Michael Watkins here with you. And, Jamie, a pretty good start for the Eagles. 
the shots are now starting to fall for Madison Southern. It's really been a game of runs here. Uh, Greg Crossing got out to an 8-4 lead. Southern jumped out in front, and it seems like Crossing just won't go away. They keep uh, coming back, and right now they're back within two at 2018. 324 to play. Adams up the floor for Madison Southern. Long pass up to Lee. They find Turner for a wide open layup, and he puts it in. 22-18, Eagles with the lead. And Baker will bring it up the floor. Baker kicks it out to Tucker. His three, pretty. His third of the game already for K.J. Tucker. And that cuts the lead to just one. He leads all scorers with 11 points. Adams, as they try to beat the pressure from great crossing, back up to Sebastian. Man-to-man -man defense for the Warhawks. Sebastian gets by the defense of Baker. Kicks it out to Turner. His three comes in and out. And rebound to Great Crossing. It's Tucker the other way quickly. Crossing over. Tucker, jumper. This one comes off, and Turner clears the rebound. A good job by Turner to put his body into Barber and showed him off to get that rebound. Neither team really doing anything on the offensive glass. I think that could be a point where a difference is made a little later on if somebody could just find a way to get a couple putback baskets. Nice move from Sebastian, but he can't finish. Second time, Sebastian has found his way inside but could not knock down the layup. It's McKenzie up the floor. He'll find Tucker on the right wing, matched up with Wooten. And Wooten going to be called for the foul. 22-21. It's the fourth team foul against the Eagles. Smith. And Fugit into the game for Madison Southern. Fugit only with three points thus far, averaging over 19 a game. You got to think he's going to look to get a few open looks. Come into McKenzie. Swung around. Great crossing. Kicked it over to Tucker. Now on the left wing. Now back to McKenzie. Good shooter in his own right. Open Tucker. Can't leave that guy open. That's why. His fourth three of the game, he's got 14 points, 24-22. Great crossing, now back in front. Smith with it for the Eagles. Walter to Turner. Turner way up top with it. Not a spot where you normally like to see your big man with the basketball. Smith with 126 to play. Will drive in. Hang kicks it out for a few get three. It's good. Three balls raining down here at Seabury. Such a well set up play. And we see him do that often where they drive and kick to the corner. Nate Turner had a great uh, screen there to seal Fugit for the open basket. McKenzie with it on the left wing. Over to Baker. Tucker open again. Three pointer again. And that one comes off, but it's an offensive foul. Going to be the first on Baker, fourth on the Warhawks. Southern leading by one, 56 seconds remaining here in the first half. Buchanan will inbound. He'll come in to Wooten. Now back to Hunter. Under one minute to play, they come over to Wooten. Wooten, long pass up to Fugit. Fugit back to Buchanan. Now it's Smith. Walter will drive in, kicks it back over to Fugit. Now Turner, right wing, Wooten's got it back to Fugit. He's knocked down two threes. This one in and out, and great crossing back the other way. That was a, definitely a good look, and it looked like it was going to go down. Just caught the rim at just the wrong angle. Here's a three from McKenzie. It's good. Can't leave these guys open. Tucker and McKenzie on fire here in the first half. And Smith turns it right back over. Tried to pass to Wooten in the corner there. Wooten made a cut. Smith picked it up, and uh, he tried to put it back down. And that's uh, its not legal in the game of basketball, Michael. Well, it, if the referees don't see it, you can get away with it. But they saw it there. They did indeed see what was happening. Smith checking out, and Blake Simpson getting his first action of the game. Baker kicks it out. 
Three from McKenzie again. It's good as the first quarter comes to an end. Berea College is where we're at, and Madison Southern trills now 30-25, to 25, and Samantha Burford will talk to Austin Newton and get his first half thoughts. All right, Coach. Tell us your overall thoughts. A little bit different arena tonight. Yes. How do you feel like your team's done in the first half? I thought they did well. It's a longer court, obviously. We played in a battle last night at West Jessamine. Um, so it's a little different feel in this longer court. We, uh, we're trying to get a lot of subs in there to keep guys fresh. But right. um, we got off to a good start. We, they just hit a couple threes there at the end of the half. We should have fouled. They, we only had four fouls. And, uh, we should have fouled there late so they couldn't get a shot off. You feel like your team's losing some legs. How do you feel like they're doing on defense? I think they've defended pretty well. We've done a good job of defending except for uh, teams making threes. And it's been our problem the last few games is Wes Jessamine made a ton of threes on us last night. So we got to do a better job of guarding the arc. Do you feel like it's been a difficult night based on playing back-to-back -back two games, big games in a row? It always is, and uh, we've kind of shortened our rotation up here over the last couple weeks. So we, uh, we're we trying to keep guys fresh, put some new guys in there tonight, and uh, we're going to have to continue to do that in the second half to win this game. All right, Coach, good luck. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, we're going to take a three-minute commercial break, and when we come back, we'll hear all the halftime stat statistics right after this message. WBON TV wants to thank you for making us the most popular local news source in the region. WBON TV is now our area's most followed local news source on Facebook and social media. While others try to imitate, you can count on WBON TV to continue to dominate your coverage of news, weather, and of course local sports. Advertising is affordable too. To be part of what we're doing here at WBON TV, email us at information at WBONTV.com. Hey everyone, Marissa Hempel here, news director with Richmond's very own WBONTV.com. If you've got a story, news tip, or fantastic idea or angle for a local feature, I want you to contact me directly at Marissa at WBONTV.com. Send us your pics and video through all of our links on WBONTV.com. Look for me on Facebook and Twitter too. Thanks for watching Richmond's very own WBONTV.com. We're your local source for news 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Need a physical for school or work? Need it right away? No problem! Berea Urgent Care has two convenient locations along with late hours to meet your needs. They're affordable too. Physicals at Berea Urgent Care only $20. DOT and CDL physicals are only $65. Berea Urgent Care number one by Walmart is open every day 9 to 9. Berea Urgent Care number two by Berea Drug open Monday through Friday 10 to 6. No appointment necessary. Berea Urgent Care, here when you need us. I'm Michelle. And I'm Jennifer, and in the spring of 1992, Bishop Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Esco County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cubby Deck, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shindawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Esco Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see ya. Welcome to Chenault Vineyards, locally grown wine, right here in the heart of Richmond. Chenault Vineyards is a place that everyone can enjoy. Celebrate your next event at Chenault Vineyards, whether it be a wedding, baby or wedding shower, office event, or just a place to gather with friends. You can't beat the venues or the amazing views at Chenault Vineyards. Chenault Vineyards has a restaurant open Friday through Sunday and live music as well. Visit ChenaultVineyards.com to learn more about this amazing place tucked back into the heart of Richmond. Chenault Vineyard. Citizens Guarantee Bank makes banking on the go a breeze. Banking on the go has never been easier with options like balance inquiries, make payments from any mobile device, transfer funds between accounts, activate or deactivate a card with just a tap. And with mobile checking deposit, you can deposit checks straight into your eligible checking account using your iPhone, iPad, or Android device. Take advantage of all these fast, convenient, and secure services of Citizens Guarantee Bank. Mobile carrier charges and rules and restrictions may apply. See bank for details. Citizens Guarantee Bank member FDIC. Equal housing with. This portion of live and local high school sports brought to you in part by these great local sponsors. Remember, buy and support your local businesses. 
Time for the Bishop Small Engine Repair live or halftime show here live on WBONTV.com and 106.7 The Pinnacle. At Bishop's, the variety of outdoor power equipment is second to none. Visit BishopSmallEngineRepair.com or their location on North Estill Avenue in Richmond to see all the latest brands available at Bishop's. Jamie Boggs, Michael Watkins here with you. And, Jamie, the first half went Southern's way for the most part, but to give up threes by Tucker and McKenzie to end the half, two each, and great crossing goes from down five to up five in a hurry. Yeah, it happened really quickly. Tucker, K.J. Tucker, number three, he's got 14 points at the half. Uh, he's hit four threes. Michael McKenzie hit two in a row there at the end. He, he's got ten points. Other than that, Great Crossing hasn't done a ton on the offensive end. Neil Baker's gotten a couple shots in the lane. He's got four. Jalen Barber's got two points on a putback. Southern's been a little bit more spread out. Chad Fugit's got six points, five each for Jaden Adams, Samuel Lee, and Nate Turner. And I feel like several of those were 5-0 runs by one yeah. player. Uh, for the Eagles... It's been a, uh, a, a really a, an interesting game because you've had Jaden Adams come off the bench and play well, but your starting point guard, Sebastian's kind of struggled to really find the flow of the offense. And uh, it's been an interesting game thus far for the way this team has played. Our stats brought to you by Gillum Sports Lounge, served up by Gillum's. Great pizza, great appetizers, great food, and great fun at Gillum Sports Lounge in the Richmond Mall. Go over and see Jeff and the gang and – Every WBON TV broadcast can be watched live at Gillum's. You can grab some great food and watch all of our exciting WBON TV local sports at Gillum Sports Lounge in the Richmond Mall. Terry McKeon has got us tuned in. He's watching from Bear Waller. You know that's it? No idea. I don't either. That's where Terry McKeon is watching in. us. And uh, Roland Weir Willie, good to see my nephew Hunter Buchanan play on the court, named after his grandfather. And uh, we we'll thank you for everybody hanging out with us, tuning us in here tonight. It's been a fun game thus far, and we knew it would kind of be a game of runs because, you know, the Eagles, when they're knocking down their shots, they are a much different team. And that was shown there in the first half because when they were knocking down their shots, they were able to build a lead. Then Turner missed a couple, Fugit missed a couple, and now they go into the half down by five. Yeah, both teams, for, for the most part, shooting a pretty high percentage. It just so happens that Great Crossing hit their big ones late and uh, ended up going into halftime of the lead. And we'll see if Southern comes back and changes anything up defensively because those guys have been shooting wide open three-pointers. I can tell you something, Jamie. Nobody is having as much fun tonight as this guy right here at midcourt doing the dancing on the floor right now <laughs> at this halftime show. We are live here on 106.7 The Pinnacle on WBONTV.com. Let's take one more three-minute commercial break and come back on the stations of Walling for Broadcasting. The Estill Clinic and Urban Healthcare Pharmacies are focused on providing the best care possible for the people of Estill County. Our care for our patients and our community is what sets us apart. With society's fast pace, we want to make sure you leave with the information you need about your medications. With the knowledge and experience of John, Ryan, and Janet, you are guaranteed excellent service, whether you're in the store or pulling through the drive-thru. Taking care of the people of Vestal County is our number one priority. So stop in or give us a call to become a part of our community. Gateway Cycles in Mount Sterling has the largest showroom in Central Kentucky with all the power sports products you can dream of for your next adventure. Gateway Cycles has a qualified, certified service department, friendly sales staff so you can ride free and play hard. Local people serving local people. We are here to make your dream a living adventure. Stop in and see us today at Gateway Cycles in Mount Sterling or visit us at gatewaycycles.com. Gillum Sports Lounge is the place to go to watch your favorite team, whether it be EKU, Kentucky, or your favorite local high school team on WBON-TV. Gillum's has you covered on one of their many flat-screen TVs. Gillum's has something on the menu for everyone. Pizza, burgers, mouth-watering appetizers, subs, sandwiches, salads, and more. And Gillum Sports Lounge is the perfect place to host your next event in one of their private rooms. When you think local food in Richmond, think Gillum Sports Lounge at 830 Eastern Bypass inside the Richmond Mall. 
Hometown Dental in Richmond has been serving the people of Madison County for many years. Now when you go to Hometown Dental, you can get everything you need under one roof because Hometown Dental now offers orthodontics. Hometown Dental is a full service family dentistry dental group with a personal touch. Check out their website, hometowndentalrichmond.com to learn about their services and staff at Hometown Dental. Located at 4095 Atwood Drive, Sweet A in Richmond. Mention this ad and get free x-rays or $100 off Zoom whitening treatment at Hometown Dental. When you're in Estill County and get the hungries, be sure to eat at Estill's Finest. In the mood for the best barbecue, pulled pork, brisket, steaks, ribs, or burgers? Follow the smoke to the House of Q. And for the best pizza, pasta, or salad, head on down to the Steam Engine Pizza Pub. No matter what you're craving, remember Estill's Finest, Steam Engine Pizza Pub on Main Street, or for mouth-watering barbecue, it's House of Q on River Drive in Irvine. 4 1565. Jamie Boggs, Michael Watkins here with you on 1067 The Pinnacle and WBON TV.com. You've been listening to the Bishop's Small Engine Repair Halftime Show at Bishop's. The variety of outdoor power equipment is second to none. Visit Bishop's Small Engine Repair.com or their location on North Estill Avenue in Richmond to see all the latest brands at Bishop's. Had a fun game last night over at Model. Between the girls and the boys of Model and Berea, the Berea Lady Pirates and the Pirates both coming out of there with victories. Congratulations to Damian Stepp and Eric Sowers for picking up some big district wins last night over in Richmond. Now here live in Berea at Berea College. McKenzie's pass stolen away by Fugit. Eagles going back the other way with Buchanan, who finds Sebastian to set the offense up. For the Eagles, Sebastian crossing over. Now go looking inside the Turner, picked up his dribble. Now Wooten's got it. Eagles got good minutes in the first half from Adams off the bench. Had a quick 5-0 spurt. Haven't seen him much since then, though. Sebastian drives in, kicks it out to Fugit, who's got, what, six at the half? He does. He's at two three-pointers, and Sebastian just seems to be off balance quite a bit tonight. Turner. I don't know what, how much of that has to do with the defense and how much of it has to do with uh, just maybe trying a little too hard. I know aggression is his biggest strength. He's yeah. also got to be under control. Yeah, this team kind of goes with Sebastian. He's kind of their emotional leader. When he plays well, when he plays with that grit and emotion, you can really see it kind of impact this team and how they play. 30-25, no points as we are a minute into the third quarter. Baker gets around the defense, stops, pops, and a foul called against Fugit. Looked like a, a strip there, but uh, we're going to see Baker go to the line for two. A few get second foul. You know, a lot of times it takes teams that, that aren't familiar with each other a little while, kind of getting a routine to fill each other out. These teams have never met in the history of ever, so I'm expecting things to pick up quite a bit here in the second half as they become more familiar with each other. Well, even you know this floor, it's just kind of a different game, the way this floor is and not being at your, your normal home court for Madison Southern. They're... You know, this is a home game for them, but it's really not a typical home game. 32-27, this run for great crossing, extending from the, the second quarter into the third. They lead by seven. Sebastian to Fugit, long pass to Wooten as they try to beat the pressure, and Wooten didn't see Turner open underneath the basket, now drives in, backs his way in, and Wooten will kick it out to Buchanan and back over to Sebastian to set the offense up for Madison Southern. Turner with it to Wooten. Nice pass to Fugit as he cuts back towards the third time tonight. The Eagles have found a backdoor cutter, and now Sebastian puts it in on the steal, and Baker got a little Charlie horse as Great Crossing comes back the other way with it, and Baker is down on the floor. When Sebastian got that steal, he kind of put his hip into Baker, who is still down on the floor, and we'll try to check on him the trainer from Madison Southern. I don't think it was anything malicious. I think it was more of a, uh, Jane, I think it was more of a, of a trolley horse kind of thing. Sure. And you can see the two teams talking to their coaching staffs now as Baker's getting worked on. Let's take a commercial break, and we'll come back in 30 seconds on the Pinnacle on WBONTV.com. 
healthy smiles are confident smiles. Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry is offering a new patient special. X-rays, exam, cleaning, and fluoride for only $99. They also have a $10 unit Botox special. Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry offers their patients single visit restoration on crowns, bridges, inlays, onlays, and veneers with Cirac. Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry is equipped to handle all your dental needs from implants, teeth whitening, root canal therapy, and more. For your next dental appointment, call Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry at 859-985-0201. 32-29, the Eagles get a couple of quick baskets, one by Chad Fugit, and on the inbounds pass, a steal by Sebastian, and then he lays it up and in. Baker now out of the game, trying to shake off the injury, and McKenzie kicks it out, kicked around, three on its way, it's good, and a foul. As number 22, that is Sherman, knocks down the triple, and the free throw coming up for the ever so rare four point play, Jamie. Yeah, that was, uh, there, there have been a couple of the Red Crossings players fouled on three point attempts, and Southern's got to find a better balance between closing out, not making contact, and giving them those extra shots at a, at a point because those add up down the stretch. 36 29, 6 3 to play. Sebastian. Hands it off to Wooten, who cuts back door now. It's a Turner three from the corner, short again. Didn't have his feet set. Yeah, Turner's had a really like four or five good looks tonight that have hit the front of the rim as that one did. McKenzie shoves off on Sebastian, pulls the three. It comes off. Turner grabs the rebound. Eagles not really getting any calls, even though they're the home team this evening. There's been a couple of calls that could go either way. They've either gone nowhere. We're gone the way of great crossing. Turner, another good look. This one comes off, and McKenzie with the rebound for the Warhawks. Yeah, Southern just not seeing the shots falling. They're getting the good looks that they want, I believe. Uh, had some success on back door. They may have to go to the basket a little bit more than they're used to if the shots aren't going to fall. Barber can't handle the entry pass. It's out of bounds. Back to Madison Southern. 5-16 to play. Fugit, long pass to Wooten. Wooten will dribble in, and thought he might have got fouled. Coach Newton asking the official where the foul call was. At the other end, Sherman will drive and lay it off the glass. Comes off, ball tipped out, back over to the Eagles. I'll say this, Michael, not a lot of ticky-tack fouls being called. Yeah. They're letting him play a little bit. And Coach Newton again pleading with the official. At the top of your screen, the right upper right-hand corner, you can see Coach Newton and the official talking. Now Sebastian to Fugit. Another nice look over to Wooten. Open for three on the right wing. Knocks it down. That's how the Eagles like to play when they get those three balls to fall. They are an entirely different team. I'll say this. They have had zero problems with this uh, Warhawk pressure. Yeah. It has not impacted them at all. If anything, it's helped them get some really open looks when they've broken it quickly. McKenzie around the defense of Sebastian, and I think they're going to call a double foul maybe. The official came in, and he kind of pointed at both players, but they ended up just calling it on Sebastian, and the Warhawks will inbound under their own basket. McKenzie hurting after that hard fall. Uh, Sebastian took him down pretty hard, tried to help him up, but McKenzie was having none of it. Kicked into the corner. Sherman, three. This time it goes in and out. That one was halfway down. Somehow found a way to come out of the basket. Sebastian up the floor, crosses over, kicks it out. Wooten trying for back-to-back -back threes. He gets it to fall. And the Eagles trim that lead all the way down to one, 36-35. Great crossing with the lead in the basketball. Tucker drives in, great pressure defensively, but the basket's good, and Tucker, as cool as the other side of the pillow, knocks down the jumper. It's 38-35, great crossing with the lead. Timeout for the Warhawks, and Jamie, the Eagles, we talked about it. When they're knocking down those trees, they're a different team. I mean, most teams are, but this team takes so many of them right. that when they knock them down, they can compete with anybody. The threes weren't falling there at the end of the second quarter. That's how they fell down by five points at the half. Now they're falling. They're trying to fight their way back. Two big threes by Wooten. 
in the last minute. They just got to find the right guys. We've seen Wooten hit them back to back. We saw Fugit hit a couple. Turner's having a rough night, so yeah. you just got to get the ball to the guys that are hot. What's, it, what's his name? It's Gavin. Gavin, come here. Wave to the folks. Say hi to him. Say hi. You got a girlfriend? Just wave. Got you, you got a girlfriend? You're on TV. Right, listen, ladies, Gavin is single. All right. He's got his UK shirt on, and they lost, so he needs some consoling. Give him a call. Look him up on the IG. You got Instagram? No. Oh, okay. Never mind then. He's a good kid, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Gets it from his mom, he don't he? He turned bright red. <laughs> he had no idea what was happening. That was beautiful. Well, we are live here on 106.7 The Pinnacle, WBONTV.com. Lee with it. Kicks it over to Wooten. Knocked down a couple of threes. They're going to start paying attention to Jonah Wooten. See if the Eagles can get Fugit some good looks. He's not really touched the ball in the last four or five minutes since he got that backdoor cut. Turner, he'll try another one. This one comes off. Offensive rebound to Sebastian. Colby kicks it back to Turner. He'll try another one and in and out. He's missed six in a row, Michael. And he's had, they've all been good looks. They've all been really good looks. At some point, you got to pass up that look. Yeah, sometimes it's just not your night. And tonight is not the night for Nate Turner from the three-point line. Tucker kicks it into the corner. Sherman drives, got open, just left it short again. And the loose ball as Fugit. And Barber battling for it. The possession arrow pointing it over to the Eagles. Buchanan will check back in on the court. Named after his grandfather. Roland Weir Willie Court here at Seabury on the campus of Berea College. The Mountaineers. NCAA Division II school. Division III. Yep. You can correct me on the air, man. It's all right. I got you. I don't want to embarrass you. Ah, you can't. Listen, I was up here dancing to some Backstreet Boys earlier. You can't really embarrass me. It was more the, uh, oh, what can I think of their name? Travel called. Was it Michael Jackson or no, we're Spice the, Girls? Spice Girls. There that's you go. It. it was the Spice Girls that really had me troubled. 38-35, <laughs> 2.45 to play in the third. McKenzie with it for great crossing. This game has been kind of sloppy throughout. Neither team able to build a big lead. Good job McKenzie. by Sebastian to get through that screen. Here's Tucker. You can't leave that guy open, and that's why. He has got a, such a pretty jump shot. Knocks that one down and extends that lead out to five. He has touched very little rim today. Got 18 points to lead all scorers. He's got nearly half of great crossings buckets. That should have been over and back there. Sebastian got away with a shove. Now spins around, hands it off to Wooten, who cuts behind him. Buchanan open for three. That one's short. When the threes fall, the Eagles can beat anybody. When they're doing like they are right now, it's hard to come back. And McKenzie called for the shove off. That's what Kobe Sebastian can do for you, Jamie. He can just He's one of those irritators. He, he bugs you as a defender. And McKenzie hit two big shots at the end of the first half. He's got him kind of rattled here. Part of it's the tough defense. Part of it's the fact that Sebastian body slammed him earlier. <laughs> and speaking of body slam, we've not seen Baker back in the game since he went out with that little Charlie horse injury in, early in this quarter. He is sitting on the over the end of the bench down there, so he uh, doesn't seem to be serious, not on his way to the hospital or anything like that. No kind of wrap on his leg. I expect we'll see him back soon. Fugit working on Barber. Tried the pump fake, missed the shot. Ball's loose on the floor. Fugit comes away with it. Barber all over him, and they're going to call a foul against Barber. You don't see that very often. I, it's, that is a foul, but yeah. usually they let that go. Yeah, Barber put an elbow in the back of Chad Fugit, and I think Fugit for a second was going to let it go. And he's, he got aggressive and kind of ripped it away from Barber. Buchanan will inbound deep in the backcourt to, to Walter Smith. 40, 35, a minute, 27 to play. Smith up top to Fugit. Barber matched up with him. That's a good matchup. Barber, a really good athlete, but Fugit's got the speed advantage. Wooten drives around the defender and a bump foul called against Tucker. Wooten's got to be careful there. Could have been called for the hook yep. once he got down to the paint. And Tucker was showing the official kind of what he did. He'll come in up top to Smith. Smith to Buchanan. He'll try the three. And again, three balls short. Turner and Buchanan just cannot knock it down tonight. Sherman up the floor for great crossing. Top to Tucker. 
They're going to slow it down as we near and creep over the one-minute mark of the third quarter. Tucker, ball tipped away, got it back, throws it up top to Sherman. Adams set the check in for the Eagles, gave them some real good minutes in that second quarter. Tucker drives around the defense. Floater is good, but they're going to call the foul on Tucker. Was it an offensive foul? It, it is. was. I thought maybe he was the guy that – Oh, and a technical foul has been called against the great crossing coach. Technical foul against the head coach of great crossing. I thought that Smith was shoved from a different play, but they say it was an offensive foul, so the basket doesn't count. And then you attack on the technical foul for the head coach of the Warhawks. Yeah, that's um, – I mean, I – I didn't see what happened with the with the offensive foul down there. I do wonder why it's the situation where he released the ball before the contact happened. Yeah. Why does that basket not count? It happened before the foul occurred. Now, we have had some scoreboard issues. Our scoreboard said 42. The scoreboard here said 40, and it's not changed in the last few minutes. So we're going to switch ours back and say that it is 40-36. But that missed free throw from Fugit. It will remain 40-36, but the Eagles will have the basketball. Trailing it by four. I have 40 on my unofficial stat sheet. Okay. That's a quick math. I have a degree in mathematics, and all the numbers are even, so that makes it easy. If you get open for three, knocks it down in the foul. That's huge. We talked about it for Chad Fugit. He needed to get some good looks here in the third quarter. They kind of went away from him, but now run a play to get him open, and it pays dividends as Fugit knocks down his third three of the game and going to the free throw line for a chance to tie it up on the four-point play. He does. I've got him with 13 now. You mentioned just a minute ago, need to get him more touches, and they're doing just that. Yeah. <laughs> and then he takes a seat. Yeah, I like that from Coach Newton, though. You don't want to give him a quick breather to end the third quarter, get him back in to start the fourth. Because you're going to have to have some Chad Fugit points if you want to win this ball game. McKenzie gets around the defense. Ball deflected by Smith. Sherman with it for the Warhawks. Ball kicked around. It's McKenzie with it up top with under 20 seconds to play. Tucker open. Steps inside the three-point line. Jumper short. Rebound to Smith of Madison Southern, and with 10 seconds to play, the Eagles can take a lead to end the third quarter. Adams lost it. Ball stolen away by Sherman. Long feed up, and the ball stolen on the back by Wooten. He fires it up, and the third quarter comes to an end. A crazy sequence to end the period, but it stands as Madison Southern with a little run to end the third quarter. We're tied at 40 after three, folks. Don't go away live on 106.7 The Pinnacle and WBONTV.com. At Madison Drug, Charles and his staff know your time is valuable and will work to get you in and out quickly. We have a convenient drive through and offer free delivery. For vaccinations, just walk right in, no appointment necessary. Madison Drug, Richmond's hometown pharmacy. At Madison Drug, Charles and his staff know your time is valuable and will work to get you in and out quickly. We have a convenient drive through and offer free delivery. For vaccinations, just walk right in, no appointment necessary. Madison Drug, Richmond's hometown pharmacy. It's been a busy year. So what's on your to-do list? Serious house hunting? Home improvement projects? Or maybe a new car? Or a boat for summers on the lake? For more than a century, your neighbors at Cumberland Valley National Bank have been helping turn plans into reality. Stop by any of CVNB's branch offices or visit CVNB.com and find the right personal vehicle or home loan that fits your budget and meets your needs. CVNB, local banking with big time advantages. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Coverage of live and local high school sports is being brought to you in part by these great local sponsors. Remember, buy and support your local businesses. Tied at 40 as we come back to start the fourth quarter. Eagles got a good run there with a couple of baskets from Fugit. And the technical aiding in the run for Madison Southern from the head coach of Great Crossing. We're tied at 40 to begin the fourth. Here's Tucker in the corner to McKenzie. He'll step in, now swing it around. Michael McKenzie back up top to Tucker. 40-40, 7-40 to play 
in the fourth. Just underway here at Berea College. The two high school teams squaring off. Tucker around the defense of Samuel Lee and lays it in. He's got 20. That was an excellent take. Looks like that's something he could do consistently if he wanted. Fugit not back in there yet for Madison Southern, but he's on the end of the bench sitting in the seat that Austin Newton lays claim to. Smith all the way up, off the back of the rim. Tough shot from Walter Smith. We go back to a tie, 42-42, and just like that, Fugit will check back in a minute into the fourth quarter. Tucker, way out there near the half-court line, working on Lee. Drives in, left-handed layup. Too hard off the back of their backboard, or off the backboard. And we've got a whistle, going to say out of bounds, back over to Madison Southern. Nice fight there by Jaden Adams, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a much bigger Jalen Barber underneath. Adams will check out. Good energy provided once again by the backup guard. Smith, Fugit, Wooten, Lee, and Turner in the game for Madison Southern. Fugit to Lee. They try to beat this pressure, and again, the, deep, the pressure from Great Crossing has not done anything, and right on cue, they get a steal. McKenzie drives in, and we got a blocking foul called against Fugit. Actually, a pretty good job by Fugit, even though he didn't get the charge. It stops a wide-open three-pointer by Sherman, who knocked it down. Yep. Great Crossing will inbound under their own basket, tied at 42, 6.40 to play in the fourth quarter. I know we're... Um Approaching the midpoint of the fourth here, Michael, but Fugit's got three fouls. Maybe something to watch. They go in deep in the backcourt. Sherman's got it for the Warhawks to McKenzie. McKenzie working around Smith, drives in, and draws the foul. Foul by Samuel Lee there. 42-42, another foul. It's the sixth team foul for the 15 foul on Madison Southern. They come in to Sparks, swung over to Sherman. Now it's Tucker who comes from under the basket to get it up top. Tucker working on Lee, this kid has got such a pretty stroke on him. They kick it over to Sherman. He'll pump fake back to McKenzie. He'll step in for a three, kind of rust his shot a little bit. And Walter Smith comes from the top of the key all the way down to get the rebound as it was kind of running around. And Turner sneaks in for an easy two. What a find by Walter Smith. Way to run the floor there by the big man. Battle for the rebound. He finds himself all alone underneath the basket. Yeah, Turner just beat Barber down the floor. McKenzie pass deflected. Smith with a steal again. Walter. What a move. Missed the shot. He went behind the back, got fancy with it, but couldn't knock it down, and Fugit nearly got another steal. Ball's on the ground. Barber and Fugit and everybody going for it, and they're going to say it's a jump ball, possession narrow, Madison Southern. Great hustle. Love to see the guys getting on the floor like that. Everybody going after it. I feel like Barber and Fugit have been the ones in the middle of it almost every time. That's your top scorer for Austin Newton getting down on the floor this evening. The Asbury College signee. Wooten, back to Buchanan, back to Wooten as they just walk it up the floor, playing pass and catch with the pressure of great crossing. They beat the pressure, and now they'll set the offense up with 5.17 to play in the fourth. Turner. We'll dribble it a couple of times, hand it back over to Walter Smith, who comes up to set the offense up. Smith over to Fugit. Fugit up top, Turner. It, why not try it again? And again, the three ball comes off. Turner is 0 for his last seven from deep. Tucker with a basketball for great crossing. Drives in, hangs in the air. Jumper comes off, and Turner battling with Barber. Hauls down the rebound. Great rebound there by Turner. Again, nobody really hitting the offensive glass for either team here. It's McKenzie second. McKenzie has not looked the same since he took that spill earlier when he got tied up with Sebastian. You see him walking a lot on defense. That last three he attempted looked kind of like a knuckleball. Not sure if he's rattled or, or what. And Baker, who again took a little hip check from Sebastian early in the third quarter, now over here walking around on the near side, but 
He has not been back in the game since then. And he's the point guard. He controls the offense for great crossing. So not having him, out, having him out there has been a big difference for them as well. Well, it's really done. It's caused Tucker to have the ball in his hands a lot more yeah. up top. Uh, not allowed for the penetration kick out that was so successful for them in the first half. Fizor and Sherman back in. Free throw from Smith is good, 45-42. This game could come down to free throws as we come down the stretch. Walter Smith splits a pair and the rebound to McKenzie. He's going the other way in a hurry. McKenzie spun out of control. That was an easy call for the official. And, McKen and the coach from Great Crossing quickly brings him out. He had a lot of words to say to him there as well. You know, uh, a timeout. Like took his frustration out yeah. on his player instead of the official. Timeout, great crossing, full timeout. They trail by three back in one minute on the Pinnacle and on WBONTV.com. At Eastern Kentucky University, we recognize greatness starts in the classroom, but it doesn't end there. You have to get hands on, get real world experience and discover who you are meant to be. Be a crime fighter. Be a visionary. Be a colonel. See what you can be. Visit go.eku.edu slash colonel. Affordable Service Solutions is the heating and air company you want to call when you want the work done right the first time for an affordable price. That's Affordable Service Solutions. Call Brian at 779-0122 for all your heating and cooling needs, plus Tempstar units at an affordable price. That number again is 779-0122. And remember, Affordable Service Solutions is your local Tempstar dealer. Berea College, the host of tonight's game between Madison Southern and Great Crossing. And got some fans hanging out with us. Stephanie Wiley or Whaley says go great crossing and Stephanie Whaley Berea College graduate as well seen a lot of games on this court cheering from afar and Jesse Miller watching he says he's never heard of great crossing they are actually a new school it's their first year a high school over in Scott County Jesse so this is their first year in the 11th region Buchanan Baker, Baker back in the game there for great crossing been out for a while with a leg Injury. See if that can pay dividends for the Warhawks as Fugit drives in, kicks it out. Turner, three, and again, it's short. They've all been short, Jamie. All of them have hit the front of the rim and come off for an eight Turner. He's seen it from every angle as well. A lot of people love that corner three. It looks like it might be his hot spot, but not today. Yeah, Turner's had so many good looks that have just been short, and now Walker Smith called for a foul as the him and – Baker, the poor old Baker, comes right back in, hits the deck once again. Smith took his legs out. That was the problem before. Uh, that's a good call there on the foul. Baker working on Smith, uh, showing no ill effects now of that injury. Crossing over, getting inside. Baker swings it around to Sherman. Good move. Back to Baker, wide open free throw line jumper. See, well, you thought he might be cold, but he comes in and nails the wide open J and cuts that lead down to a point, 45-44. Smith. Make, making a difference immediately coming in. To Turner as he's way up top with it near the midcourt line. Smith will come back as Turner hands it off to him. Now it's Wooten on the extended right wing. Jonah back up top to Turner. They work it around left wing. It's Fugit. Fugit drives around and draws the foul from Tucker. Two of the top shooters in the 11th region. Fugit for Madison Southern. Tucker from Great Crossing. And Kobe Sebastian going to come back in for Walter Smith and try to close this one out as the point guard for Madison Southern. J.T. Elliott hanging out with us says the Eagles showing that they can compete for the 11th region title. These two teams kind of in the middle of the pack right now in the 11th region. Fugit knocks down the first. Tucker shooting 37% three-pointers on the season, and he's taken a lot of them. He's uh, taken over 80. 
Oh, he's got a good. He got a pretty shot on him. One of the best, as far as just the shoot and the release that I've seen in high school basketball in quite some time. 47-44. If Fugit knocks down both, Baker double team gets rid of it over to Tucker. Tucker gets around the defense back to Baker. Baker double teamed once more. Back over to Tucker. 3.13 to play in the fourth. Tucker drives in, kicks it out to Sherman. He'll step in. Pretty jumper from Sherman. 47-46, 3.02 to play in the fourth. I guess the thing to do if you're not getting any offensive rebounds is just not to miss. That's one way to do it. I prefer to miss and make it look good. I've seen you do it. <laughs> Sebastian with it up top. Working on Baker. Colby to Fugit. Chad going to drive around Tucker. Lay it off the glass and in. Great play call from Austin Newton as he finds his two guard at the top of the key, kind of in that high post area. Back to a three-point lead. Fizor drives in. He lays it in. We're trading baskets. Back and forth we go. And a tight one, 49-48. Eagles lead it by one. Sebastian over to Lee. Back to Sebastian as he comes up the floor. Back over to Lee, double team. Now in the corner, it's Wooten. Jonah knocked down two big threes to end the third quarter to help tie it up at 40 apiece, and the Eagles now lead it by one. And Austin Newton asking for a foul call, and he gets it as Tucker kind of had a hold of Chad Fugit. That's going to be his fourth, Michael. I'm sure Austin Newton wouldn't mind to see him out of the ball game. Tucker's been kind of quiet the last few minutes. I don't remember the last time he scored. Has he scored a point this quarter? I don't believe so. He had a, a little flurry there at the end of the third. He's got 20 points in the game, but hasn't done anything lately. Fugit knocks down the first again. Chad doing his due diligence to the free throw line, knocking down these free throws late. An 84% free throw shooter. Knocks down both. He's got 19. And Walter Smith will check in, kind of going offense, defense with Austin Newton. Smith, Sebastian, Lee, Turner, and Wooten in the game. It's a lot of energy out on the court right now for Southern. Minute 55 to play in the fourth. Baker working on Sebastian. Sebastian had some go around him. Baker drives in, shot comes off, and the rebound to Samuel Lee. Over to Walter Smith. Smith and the Eagles trying to extend this lead. Austin Newton wants to call a timeout. 51-48. We'll come back in one minute. Make it 30 seconds. We'll come back in 30 seconds on the Pinnacle on WBONTV.com. So you guys have shown us a lot of love on Facebook and, of course, our website at WBONTV.com. So we're going to let you in on a little secret, our YouTube channel. It's where all the local stories are posted first for news, and you can even catch the live stream of any of your local high school sports on there as well. Be sure to subscribe as well as click on the little bell for notifications. For when we post a video go live, you'll be the first to know. And don't be afraid to share and like a video. It really helps us out here at the studio to bring you the best in local news. And of course on Facebook, hit the see first button so we come up first when you're scrolling through your timeline. We are back on WBONTV.com and on the new Berea Powerhouse Radio Station 1067 The Pinnacle. Brock Palmer, Marissa Palmer, and I are cheering on our Eagle family from Florida. Let's go Austin Newton and the Eagles. Brent Palmer and his family watching us live on WBON-TV. Of course, Brent and his family moved down there. As Brent got a job at a school down in Florida. It was a big part of the success on the baseball team, his son Brock, and the football team as well for Madison Southern over the last couple of years. Here's Wooten over to Fugit. Now it's Lee as the Eagles try to work this clock. They go inside Wooten, wide open. Sebastian doesn't take the three. Smart play from Colby as he backs it out. Going to work some more this clock. Turner up top with it. Now it's Wooten. Wooten dribbles back the other side and finds Sebastian with it. Colby with Baker all over him. Drives over, circles around. Colby handling the basketball. Good job against this pressure. Finds Turner. Turner. Takes his dribble up, hands it off to Sebastian. Sebastian double teamed over to Lee. And Lee gets a timeout from Austin Newton. As again, he's going to try to help his team control this clock. 
Now it's a full timeout, 51-48. Now we'll take a one-minute break and come back on the Pinnacle on WBONTV.com. WBONTV wants to thank you for making us the most popular local news source in the region. WBONTV is now our area's most followed local news source on Facebook and social media. While others try to imitate, you can count on WBONTV to continue to dominate your coverage of news, weather, and of course local sports. Advertising is affordable too. To be part of what we're doing here at WBONTV, email us at information at WBONTV.com. Hey everyone, Marissa Hempel here, news director with Richmond's very own WBONTV.com. If you've got a story, news tip, or fantastic idea or angle for a local feature, I want you to contact me directly at Marissa at WBONTV.com. Send us your pics and video through all of our links on WBONTV.com. Look for me on Facebook and Twitter too. Thanks for watching Richmond's very own WBONTV.com. We're your local source for news 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. This broadcast of live and local high school sports is supported fully by great local businesses like these. Won't you support them too? For great crossing, 48.2 to play. Lee comes in to Sebastian in the backcourt and they quickly foul Colby. See if Colby Sebastian can help extend this lead at the free throw line. Pam, really, go ahead. Pam Sanders watching us on WBON TV says, they're making her pressure sky high. Her blood pressure, I'm assuming, is what she meant by that. Yeah, such a tight game. I know this is a little different. Last week we called the All-A Classic Championship game. We saw a, uh, a St. Henry team get a big lead. They yep. completely took the air out of the ball and things changed. And I always worry when a team changes their offensive strategy, I think that lack of energy translates to defense. And I hope I don't see that from Southern here. Uh, give in a little bit to close the sleeve with under a minute left. Sebastian makes them both under pressure. Smith in, Fugit out, defense for offense, or offense for def defense for offense substitution. It really works either way, Michael. Now it's Baker. Got to get some quick baskets for great crossing. Tucker's three, comes off. Smith the rebound. Walter gets it up to Sebastian. He's quickly fouled once again. See, I think right there defensively you got to try to get a steal for a little bit longer before you foul. You're down five. If you get a 10-second violation there, you still got plenty of time to get a bucket and foul again. Uh, I think they fouled a little too quickly. And maybe not the right person. Don Spicer, the grandpa of Jaden Adams, tuning us in. Jaden had a pretty good first half at five points in that second quarter. As the Eagles at one time led by five or six in that second quarter, ended up going down in the at the half by five, but they built this lead back up with Kobe Sebastian and Chad Fugit at the free throw line. Sebastian, four big free throws to help build this lead. 55-48, 33 seconds to play. Baker over to Tucker. Nice feed. Fizor, three, too hard. Sebastian goes up high for the rebound, but it's out of bounds to stay with great crossing. My boy Drew Alexander watching tonight says thank you WBON TV for the great content. I'm assuming he's not talking about you and I, but more of the, the game on the course. Thankfully, it makes us look good. Three from Sherman. It's too hard. Fees or the rebound. Fugit rips it away from him, and Chad quickly fouled, and that should probably do it, Jamie. Yeah, it should. Uh, Seven-point lead, 12 seconds. I think the deal's done anyway, but I think Fugit's going to put the last nail in the coffin here at the line. If you get up to 19 points, and you know what, Chad, he never really dominates a game. He doesn't come out and, and he'll have big spurts, but what he does, he may be the most consistent player in the district. As you know, you know he's going to knock down the open shots. You know he's never really going to do anything to hurt you. He's just a very solid basketball player. He lets the opportunities come to him. He's he has several threes today, but he has also contributed from the free throw line, driven to the basket, and that gets him to 20. Uh, and uh, done some work on backdoor cuts, which was very successful for Southern throughout the night. 56-48. Baker tries the three. Banks it in. It's open. Four seconds to play. No timeout. 56-51. That will be your final score. Madison Southern. 
here at Berea College knocks off the great crossing Warhawks out of Scott County, 56-51. Good game all around. The Eagles had a lead, fell behind, came back, took the lead, and never relinquished it here in the fourth quarter. Really good game from Austin Newton's bunch. We will take a three-minute commercial break, come back here to Berea and wrap things up from the Seabury Center at Berea College back in three minutes on 106.7 The Pinnacle and WBONTV.com. Need a physical for school or work? Need it right away? No problem. Berea Urgent Care has two convenient locations along with late hours to meet your needs. They're affordable too. Physicals at Berea Urgent Care only $20. DOT and CDL physicals are only $65. Berea Urgent Care number one by Walmart is open every day 9 to 9. Berea Urgent Care number two by Berea Drug open Monday through Friday 10 to 6. No appointment necessary. Berea Urgent Care, here when you need us. I'm Michelle. And I'm Jennifer, and in the spring of 1992, Bishop Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Estill County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cupcadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shindawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see you. Welcome to Chenault Vineyards, locally grown wine, right here in the heart of Richmond. Chenault Vineyards is a place that everyone can enjoy. Celebrate your next event at Chenault Vineyards, whether it be a wedding, baby or wedding shower, office event, or just a place to gather with friends. You can't beat the venues or the amazing views at Chenault Vineyards. Chenault Vineyards has a restaurant open Friday through Sunday and live music as well. Visit ChenaultVineyards.com to learn more about this amazing place tucked back into the heart of Richmond. Chenault Vineyard. Citizens Guarantee Bank makes banking on the go a breeze. Banking on the go has never been easier with options like balance inquiries, make payments from any mobile device, transfer funds between accounts, activate or deactivate a card with just a tap. And with mobile checking deposit, you can deposit checks straight into your eligible checking account using your iPhone, iPad, or Android device. Take advantage of all these fast, convenient, and secure services of Citizens Guarantee Bank. Mobile carrier charges and rules and restrictions may apply. See bank for details. Citizens Guarantee Bank member FDIC equal housing with Thank you for tuning in to live and local high school sports on WBON TV. Please tell our sponsors how much you enjoy the broadcast, including these great local businesses. Back on 106.7 The Pinnacle on WBON TV.com. Jamie Boggs, Michael Watkins, good game as the Eagles knock off Great Crossing 56-51, Jamie. And what this game tells me is that Madison Southern they can compete in this 11-3, Jim. And they, you know, you listen, if Nate Turner knocks down half his threes, they win this game by 15 points. Absolutely. They left a lot of points off the board. Buchanan never got it going. Turner, again, missed a lot of open shots. If they knock down those shots at any point against anybody, and, again, it's all about making your baskets. You've got to do that, obviously. But, listen, this Eagles team can compete in this 11-3, Jim. When they knock down those shots, they are an entirely different team. But tonight I think their defense was the difference because – once Tucker got going there early, they made a change, and they switched over on the defense on him, changed up a couple of different guys that were guarding him, and uh, kept him kind of not really shut him down in the second half, but I don't think he scored in the fourth quarter. He didn't. He ended up with 20 for the game, but uh, like you said, that was through three quarters, and it, it really helped, of course, when uh, Greg Crossing's point guard went out for a little bit. Yes. But but I, I don't think that's the difference in the game. I think the difference is Southern had people stepping up throughout the game. Jonah Wooten had a really good stretch. He ended up with 10 points. Chad Fugit had 20 to lead uh, to lead Southern. You mentioned it earlier, Jaden Adams came in and, and gave him a really good spurt. Samuel Lee came off the bench and got five immediately. It was so many guys stepping up in short spurts and giving a really good effort to keep Southern in a position to pull away late. We are live here on the Chenault Vineyards postgame show at Chenault Vineyards. Uh, they got the Sweet and Deadly Murder Mystery coming up on February the 15th. If you and your loved one or your better half, our better halves, you know, if they're looking for something to get into the day after Valentine's Day, you can head over to Chenault Vineyard for the Sweet and Deadly Murder Mystery on February the 15th. You can find out more information at ChenaultVineyard.com or on the Facebook page of Chenault Vineyard. And if you're looking to buy some tickets, you can head over to Eventbrite.com for those tickets to the Sweet and Deadly Murder Mystery. 
which is presented by Chenault Vineyards and the Bluegrass Mystery Theater. Again, that taking place on February the 15th. Got some Valentine's Day plans? I have zero plans. You want to do something? Let's do it, man. Yeah. I mean, we might call a ball game or two next week. It's that coming up. That would be great. Hey, Harlan County is coming gift. up here. Yeah. Are they really? Yeah. What day is it? Is it on Valentine's it's Day? It's on Valentine's Day. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to get either one of us in trouble. <laughs> I stay that way anyway. I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> good, a good ball game. Fifty-six, fifty-one. Your final score once again. Now, time to crown our hometown dental player of the game. And I think with the way Chad Fugit helped close this game out, absolutely. I think Chad Fugit should be our hometown dental player of the game. Yeah, absolutely. He he was kind of. Uh, it's almost as soon as you mentioned him not doing yeah. anything in a while, he really picked it up, hit two big threes at the end of the second quarter, and still ended up scoring 12 points in the in the second half without really, without us noticing until he knocked yeah. down the free throws well, to ice it. They stopped going to him for a while, but again, Chad's the kind of guy that he can get his 19 or 20, 21 points, whatever it is, by just kind of playing in the flow of the offense. He doesn't really have to dominate the ball. He doesn't have to have certain plays called for him. When the shot's there, he takes it, and he usually makes it. He's a very efficient player. Our hometown dental player of the game tonight, Chad Fugit for Madison Southern. When you need uh, Zoom whitening treatment, they're giving you $100 off of the Zoom whitening treatment right now at, at uh, Hometown Dental or free exams and x-rays for new patients at Hometown Dental on Atwood Drive in Richmond. All you have to do is mention WBON TV Sports or Walling for Broadcasting to get that great deal. Again, $100 off of Zoom whitening treatment or free exams and x-rays for new patients at Hometown Dental on Atwood Drive in Richmond. If you don't have dental insurance, that's a great way to save some money over at Hometown Dental. My friend, good ball game tonight. The Eagles knocking off a, a good team in the 11th region. And listen, Madison, Cent just Madison Central just a couple of weeks ago beat Great Crossing by about the same margin. Right. Again, different teams play each other differently, but I, we just keep talking about it. This 44th District Tournament, we saw Model and Berea last night. Southern, Central, Berea Model, girls and boys, everybody's competitive this year. Should be a very fun district tournament whenever it rolls around over at EKU in a month or so. Right. One of the only two districts remaining in the state where it's kind yep. of a, it's a blind draw. You don't seed it. And usually that, that can uh, really negatively impact a team that's maybe had a good year and deserves a higher seed. But this year you would think that the, the draws about even for everybody drawing that way instead of doing it by seeding because all the teams are fairly in the same re, uh, region anyway. The draw that you're speaking of will be taking place on February the 10th, so it's not too far away. We'll find out who's playing who on February the 10th. Final score once again, 56-51. Our cameraman tonight, T.T. Taylor Burns. Our cameraman, our producer, as always, doing a great job, Gage Hill. For my friend Jamie Boggs, you can catch him tomorrow morning, or not tomorrow morning, on Monday morning on 106.7 The Pinnacle from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. And I'll be playing another fun game of wrestler or politician, and you can win a free T-shirt, uh, a 106.7 The Pinnacle T-shirt yeah. Monday morning, right? Yeah, those are nice shirts. They're uh, vintage design, really soft. Surge provided those. They're awesome. You got a prediction for the game tomorrow? Super Bowl, Chiefs, 49ers? You know, I, I feel like the, the 49ers are the more complete team. They're better at just running the ball and killing clock. I, I think teams like those generally are more consistent, but the Chiefs may score 60. Yeah. You never know. I think it'll be a high-scoring game. I'm going to take San Francisco 30 38-34 over the Chiefs tomorrow night. I think it'll be a high-scoring game. Take the over. There you but go. But I don't. I'm not very good at betting, so don't listen to me. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. A good time hanging out with you. Our yeah, next man. broadcast will be Tuesday. Another big game over in Irvine as Estill County will take on Breathitt County, a big 14th region matchup over there. We will see you then. For all of us here on 106.7 The Pinnacle and WBONTV.com, have a great rest of your weekend.